Former notorious gangster Alan Hale recently released his memoir that gives an honest and detailed account of what really happened back in the 1980s when he and uh, Andre Stander uh, were jailed for their mad bank robbery sprees they've committed over the years. Now this fast paced, this raw and witty book is titled Bank Robber, My Time with Andre Stander and its author Alan John joins me now in studio this morning to tell us more uh, about this offering. Alan, a very good morning to you. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. It's an absolute pleasure. Now, uh, a short while ago, you and I were just having an off-camera conversation about how you're not so proud of the contents of this book. But first, uh, let's get to how and why you got into the business of gangsterism and, uh, and robbing banks. Read the book. <laughs> <laughs> that I will. It's, it's actually a very long story, and it started off way back in 1972, when I was, um, I had dropped out of college. I'd been a, uh, a student at Teachers College, and then, and then I joined a, a very large uh, chain store organisation. And at that stage, my life was basically uh, characterised by the fact that I had d developed, from my high school days, I developed chronic depression, to the extent that I used to be rendered totally incapable of getting out of bed for occasionally, you know, a week at a time, not getting out of bed to, to bath or to eat. And, you know, those days it was a case of, you know, the most sage advice that I used to get from, from professionals was to pull myself together, to snap out of it. Snap out of what? I didn't know what it was that I was supposed to snap out of. I just knew that I... Uh, very often used to live in a, a very, very dark place, which I, in the book, refer to as, you know, often ending up in the, in the, on the dark side of the moon, lost and bewildered and floundering emotionally. And, and eventually I got fired from my job. And uh, it, it, it's, it's a long, complicated story that reached a conclusion whereby I had decided that I was not going to go home and face the music about having been fired. Yeah. Uh, you know, I slithered my trick. I dropped out of college. I've been fired. I'm on a slippery slope to, you know, some form of calamity. And I, I, I was living in a residential hotel in, in Weinberg in Cape Town. Mm. And, and I, I, was, I was out of funds. I was, being, I was told that I had to pay up on my, uh, on my rental uh, or I was going, going to be put out on the streets. That's where you uh, felt your, your, your world crashing down oh. and hence you decided to go for this route. Well, I never decided. You know, it, it was circumstances that got me to be walking past the little one-man one man bank one morning. Mm. And I happened to glance into it. And as I walked on, and this is the danger, if we, if we allow our, our thoughts to be dominated by external factors, you know, it, it, it can affect us in a very negative way. I took the image of that little bank home with me that night yeah. and I started fantasizing about the possibility of me robbing the bank. Even mm. though I knew it was very, very, very wrong, we come up with these justifications. You know, it's a form of sophistry. We, we justify what we know is wrong in such a way that it appears to be okay. And I yeah. came up with all sorts of justifications. I walked in one morning without a firearm. I used my finger tucked in behind my coat and I ran away from the, from, from the bank. And that's how the whole process starts. You and know, also talk about uh, how uh, the events as narrated in this book are not so romanticized or perhaps uh, exaggerated. Uh, talk to us about some of the construed version that you've heard of and have seen. Oh my goodness, that in itself could be a contents of a book. Jeez. All the various um, myths and thumbsuck that has been uh, taken as being fact. Mm. Like apparently Andre and I one day we robbed a bank and then re re we, we returned to the same bank apparently because we heard that the, the bank manager was bragging about the fact that we had missed the, you know, the loot which was in a, in, in a box. I mean, you can ask yourself, you know, if you've just robbed a bank and you return to it, what do you expect to find there waiting for you? Mm. You know, loads of police cars. And, you know, that's just one of the, 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 uh, the, the myths that's developed. 
yeah. uh, over the years. How did you meet Stander? I met him in prison. I, I subsequently ended up uh, several years later with a second conviction, serving 15 years for having robbed five banks in Pretoria. Jeez. And uh, by the time Andre arrived at the prison, I was really well advanced in my ideas and plans and strategy to escape from prison. Mm. So, you know, two convicted bank robbers with similar tastes in music and literature. We differed on rugby. I mean, he was a Bulls supporter and I was a province supporter for my pains and my sins. And... Um, but, but we recognized that there was a, an affinity between the two of us, which, uh, if we had allowed it to, to develop, would end in, 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 in a calamity. Mm -hmm. And it's a long story, but the, we, we did eventually manage to escape. Yeah. And then we embarked on a series of robberies, the likes of which I often, whilst writing the book, I had to often sit back and give myself a, a reality check to say... Did we really do this? You know, like on one particular day, we robbed four banks one morning in quick succession. Jeez, man. And we were pursued by a helicopter. Well, I mean, that is the stuff of, of seriously bad fiction, but it was reality. You know, the, the, yeah, the I mean, contents of the back, book beggar the, belief. Yeah, I mean, 34 years later, you, you're now looking back, you're now reflecting. And I'm sure you do, you do have regrets, eh? Oh, major. What are some of them? Major. Well, I spent 27 years in prison. And uh, I've got nothing to show for it. You know, mm. in, in terms of the harm and the damage that it's done to me and to friends and family, um, it, 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 it's, uh, that's the major regret, obviously. But yeah. the major regret, actually, is the fact that I've wasted talents and abilities and I have achieved nothing. Mm. All right, where can we get hold of this book? Uh, it's just recently been released. So it's in the process of ending up in, the, in, in you know, all the, the usual suspects. All right. Thank you so much, Ellen. We appreciate it. My Andrew. absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Ben Groba, my time with Andre Stender, a memoir of a former notorious gangster, Ellen Hale. We thank him for his time. Well, you can also join us uh, for our viewer, viewer, viewer slot every month. And, and you have, all you have to do 